Overlord the Great might be a little bit better than we initially thought. Hey Carfathers, today is finally the release day of Light of Salvation, Logic and Destruction and with that we've got a lot of new interesting cards as well as the more controversial one that is Overlord the Great as seen as in the community sense it has been perceived at not a very, very positive note and, and also on this channel by myself included I've rated the card as ish, okay, in, it's okay card but it doesn't really appeal in a much sense and it was in some case uh, deductible thanks to all the hype support that we got with all the new strides and all the new premium collection and all the other VRs that were looking pretty damn promising the Overlord the Great looked a little bit on the more eh side of the spectrum. However, the card might actually be a lot better than we initially gave credit to it, and we can probably see the first signs of this in the Japanese market. As some of you might have seen that the price for Overlord the Great is a lot higher than you will expect from a card that would perform a little bit lower on the meta out spectrum. There's of course hype around the card itself because it still is an overlord card and uh, overlords tend to be a little bit more expensive especially compared to something like Nova Grappler but you wouldn't expect this much of a difference. And in this video I want to explain why Overlord the Great might actually be a lot better and why we are overlooking some parts as the card in itself might not look very promising overall but if you look at all the pieces that Kagero already has or that it got, it basically got in this set might suddenly see the card is actually pretty damn good and might even be better as we get more support in the upcoming weeks for Kagero. So let's take a look at the VR itself, Overlord the Great. We already know about that when you place it on the Vanguard Circle, you can call a Neo Flame to the field from your drop zone, and it has on attack skill when you have a Great Ring in your drop zone, uh, in your soul, and it attacks the end of the battle, counter plus one, discard two, you restand him and your Neo Flame, and you get drive minus one. So basically, it's the Overlord, uh, normal Overlord, but now you can do it with a Rearguard as well, and it doesn't need to hit. Already, the good part about the fact is that it's a consistent restander. That's one big thing. It's a consistent restander, but not only that, it restands a rear guard with it. Sadly, it's a specific rear guard, so it that makes it a little less good. But also, it fixes that specific rear guard from the drop zone, as when you place it on the Vanguard Circle, it calls that one immediately to the field. There are some big things with this. First off, Kagro's biggest issue is that. Its main focus and main pressure is about the Vanguard. The, your rearguard slots usually are empty or you cannot put sustain enough pressure with your rearguards on a more consistent basis. With the fact that you can recall Dragonic Neo Flame from the drop zone is a pretty big thing. This way you enable more consistent pressure from your rearguards as soon as you are getting more rearguards. You might say, well, if we look at Neo Flame himself, it's a pre pretty generic vanilla card as it doesn't really do anything for itself. It can only give the Vanguard that is specifically the Great himself plus 5k when it attacks and you could counter plus 2 to give it a crit. That makes this card not really that great because it is a vanilla card in the early stage of the game. Only the moment that you ride the Great and that's basically or most ideally your second Great 3, then suddenly this card does something. However, there is a case where this card is actually pretty good in its own regard. And that's thanks to the fact that it is a vanilla and how the great works. Because it's a vanilla, you do not mind losing this card. So you can put it onto the field on your grade 2 turn to put out aggro against your opponent to just pressure them out. And then when you're guarding, just intercept with it and you have no issue with it as seen as just a vanilla. But the fact that you can then get it from the drop zone makes it even more incentive to just let it be destroyed. It's basically the same as the Rising Phoenix for Narukami that it can keep recalling itself back. Only in this case, only thanks to the uh, Overlord the Great. But unlike the Rising Phoenix, it can kill itself off by in just intercepting. And this also helps with the problem that Kagero deals with quite often, is that your opponent is just not calling any rearguards to the field, so they cannot get minus by your retiring effect. If you're just putting some Neo Flames onto the field early game, your opponent is forced to put out pressure back to you, so they need to call more units to the field, which you can then snipe 
the following turn as you're just going to intercept with your Neo Flames anyways as you just want them into the drop zone to use them later down the road. So Neo Flame fills that niche in Kagero itself just thanks to the fact that it's a vanilla on its own and it can be recalled thanks to Overlord the Great. But that's basically only these two cards that are enabling the VR itself. To basically see the more value out of the cards that we have, we need to take a look at the support cards that they got, as that makes a big, big difference. And the main card that we need to look at is Dragon Full Armored Buster, as this is a very high value card for Overlord. As, not, as his first skill doesn't really mean anything, it can become a 30k attacker when your opponent feels empty, not really that important. But it's its second skill that when you place it, you can Soul Blast 2, you can retire one of your opponent's Vanguard, so that's already a retire, so a minus 1 or a plus 1 for you the, in card economy. But you can then also look at the top 7, look for an Overlord and add it to hand. That's basically a plus 2 in, your, in, in one card. You retire something... And you search for a specific grade 3 in, from your main from your deck that basically supports your main archetype and search for your main boss monster. Not a lot of clans got a card that does those things in one single card. It retires and it searches for a specific card. Even Oracle Think Tank doesn't have that value that much value in a single card. Oracle Think Tank can generate that same scenario, but it costs them two to three cards to make that happen. So the fact that Kagero got such a good very strong value card is a big thing. Sure, the Soul Blast 2 might be a little bit heavy, but only getting this thing one off, uh, once off in the game is already pretty significant. And it also fixed the whole issue with potential great, lock, great stock as you fix your great free on that turn. And then at the same time, I want to address the big elephant in the room, and that's Waterfall. A lot of people are saying, well, what, it's still worse than Waterfall, so it probably Waterfall is better and that makes its VR not really re reliable or uh, redundant or whatsoever. There is a big issue though with Waterfall. Waterfall's big problem is the fact that it's not consistent whatsoever. Dragonic Waterfall doesn't get a card like Dragonic Full Armored Buster. Overlord the Great does, as it helps with the consistency problem. Dead Grade 2 fixes that on, a, on pretty much a lot. Not 100%, but it fixes it a lot. Then the other big problem with Waterfall is, a single Waterfall on its own is not really a problem. We already seen that a lot of decks can basically prepare for a Waterfall or have tactics to defend them or circumvent a kill, uh, basically a, a cheesy kill from a Waterfall. They can do a lot of things to prevent that from happening. And then after that, you, you can basically do nothing and hope to God that you can rewrite a Waterfall to pay the cost once again, because after that, it's just a vanilla. La Vanguard attack. Overlord the Great doesn't have the problem whatsoever. You only need to rewrite it once, and when it's onto the Vanguard circle, you have a Great Free in your soul, it will always have its skill. So it's a much more reliable, consistent form of pressure against your opponent, which Kagero currently does not have. As if they're stuck in the old Overlord, they need to pray to God that they are gonna hit to activate its skill. Overlord the Great doesn't care for that. We have seen that Overlord the Great is a more consistent card than Waterfall thanks to the support card but also his own skill design in the way that it functioned but we also know that the overall value of Overlord the Great and with Neoflame they both fixes a lot of niches or a lot of problems within Kagero that is with the early game pressure, the rearguard absence or the rearguard pressure that, that it lacks as well as giving your opponent more incentive to put more rearguards onto the field so you can retire them. These Overlord the Great and Neoflame can fix that in a specific uh, function, in, 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 a specific, in a specific way. However, I want to clarify one extra tactic that you can basically use with these cards that you can never do with Waterfall. With Waterfall, you want to put the Force Markers onto your Vanguard at all times because you just want to cheese a very powerful unguardable attack. With this new Overlord deck, you can basically put all the Forest Markers onto the Rearguard Circle so your Neo Flame becomes a lot more powerful. As you can ride Overlord, put it onto the Rearguard Circle so you, rearguard, you have a Rearguard attack that's probably 20, doesn't have to be Neo Flame at this time, and your Vanguard is 30. Well, with the old Overlord, you can Soul Blast 1, make it 23, and makes it a little bit more threatening. At the same time, your opponent might now think, well, it's not really that powerful, so I might just let it go through, because the second deck is very easy to guard, so you might get some extra pressure out of that, because you're now putting the force markers onto your rearguard. But at the same time, you will have more powerful rearguard attacks, so your opponent needs to divide his guard potential to block all potential strong attacks. But the most interesting part comes in the fact that when you ride into the grade, you put once again the force marker onto the rearguard circle, so your grade is potentially only 13, 
But if you uh, then you call Neo Flame, so you can say your Overlord is 18 because of Neo Flame's skill. Then you might say, well, you have a Neo Flame that's 30 and you have an Overlord that's 18. Not really that powerful if they're both reset. Well, you have that new Grade 1 Calamity Tower Wyvern that can solve this one destroy itself and give the Fanger plus 15k. A lot of people state that that's a waterfall support card, as I like to differ that it's also a very good the great card, as in it doesn't stay until the end of battle, it stays until the end of turn. So both attacks of Overlord the Great are getting a plus 15k, meaning both of their attacks are now 30, 33k attacks. So you have a rearguard that is 30 and a Vanguard that's 33 and they both are gonna attack twice. That's already a lot of pressure you're gonna get for Kagero, as Kagero usually do not generate these numbers for multiple attacks. Then you might say, well, that's still a little bit awkward as 230 attacks is basically a 28, still good, but not really that great in its in regard if you could get it a little bit higher. Well, you can make Dragonic Neoflame all the way up to 33, thanks to Dragonite Walid that gives all units in the same column plus 3k. So now you have two units that are 33k that will attack twice, and you have three drive checks. That's a lot of pressure and that can be very deadly. Now there is one extra thing you can do with those cards is the whole restand issue. When you're fighting against a restanding Vanguard, there's always a conundrum when you want to guard it. If you have a perfect guard, but only one, you usually want to save it for the second attack, as when you perfect guard the first one and they get a crit and they put it onto the Vanguard, you then get the crit on the second attack and they can potentially drive check another crit. So you usually want to protect yourself against the second attack and take the first one. And if you do not have a perfect guard, you sometimes need to make a gamble in, do I want to guard with a lot of cards on the early attack because it has less potential drive trigger power onto it and then take the last one you are basically in, in, a, in an issue where you want to say which attack do I want to guard or not this problem is a lot more problematic with overlord the great because you now also have a rear guard that restands for a lot of power but what makes it even more problem is the fact that neo flame can give the vanguard an extra crit on demand so you can now put your opponent in a tough spot if they only have one. Per, if you know that they only have one sentinel, you can basically say, "Well, I'm going to give the first attack a crit, so the first attack alone will give a lot of pressure, and maybe I get a drive check. Uh, maybe I get a crit on my drive check, so I can take the second attack also with a crit. But because now the first attack already have a consistent crit, you cannot easily say, "Well, I'm going to take it and hope the gun doesn't get a crit because it already has a crit." That makes it a lot more tougher to guard that attacks. But now also, you as an opponent, you as a player can now say, well, I drive check a crit, but I can now also put it onto my Neo Flame and maybe make my opponent get second guess if I get another crit on my second Vanguard attack. So they now need to decide, do I want a perfect guard his second Vanguard attack or I want to save it for his Neo Flame that is going to come with a crit and that's now probably 43 on its own. And don't forget, it, prob it probably has a booster, of an 11k booster because it's a 43 thanks to Walid. So the second attack is now suddenly 54. Don't forget that. That's a lot of power for Kagero with rearguard attacks. And you still have a Vanguard that needs to attack on its own. So as you can see, Overlord the Great has a lot of potential in all these kinds of interaction. Maybe the card on its own, when you just look at the VR itself, it might look really underwhelming as you need to have a Vanilla Grade 2 to interact with it, to use its skill. But when you look at that Vanilla Grade 2 and use those cards in different scenarios, in different ways to fix problems that Kagero has to deal with. And then you look at all the support cards that up its consistency and makes it even more threatening, you see that Overlord the Great is actually pretty damn great. But that's basically everything that I want to say about Overlord the Great. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of that VR. Do you think it's just, it's just meh eh, at best and it, it doesn't really do that much or do you think after watching this video you know what Overlord the Great has some good potential and it has some good upsides and it might actually be a good card for Kagero that might make Kagero a lot more interesting and a lot more viable in the current meta and who knows maybe with the new support that we're going to get in a couple of weeks it might even be better depending on if it's going to support it entirely or we might go to another build at all so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think i'm very curious on this topic as it's 
it's always interesting to talk about a card, about its potential, and how the community in, how the community reacts on how some cards are revealed and how they work. As everybody has a different opinion, and everybody is looking at it from a different angle. Some players are Kagero players, some are players that always fight against Kagero, and it makes for interesting discussion going on in the comments down below. So that's basically all for me today. I want to thank my Patreon supporters over at Patreon. Priest and John Edmondson for making all these videos possible. You guys are amazing. And as you two want to support me on Patreon, then you can go to patreon.com slash Insider and become a patron today to get also access to exclusive contents like card reviews, as well as some future deck profiles that will be added to the Patreon page. But as always, guys, I'm Mr. Time Leap, and I'll see you guys in the next one.